I'm going to talk about investment advisor licensing right now. This is a very critical topic, so please stay with me through this one. A lot of people come to me and they're not real excited about talking to another investment advisor. They've had bad experiences, their families had bad experiences. They say, you know, I don't feel like I can trust investment advisors. My answer to them is, you're probably right. You probably can't trust them. Why would I say such a thing? Well, the reason is because there's two licenses out there that an investment advisor can get. One's called a broker-dealer Series 7 license, and the other is a Series 65 for registered investment advisors. Most financial professionals that have something to have you invest in, whether they're insurance or stockbrokers, uh, anybody uh, that has a football stadium named after them will be in this category. They are broker-dealers, and they are not fiduciaries, meaning they are not required by law to act in your best interest. They can legally put their own interests above yours. So when you go to them and you ask them their advice, if you think about it, if you go to your doctor, wouldn't it be nice to think he's trying to cure you instead of sell you some pharmaceutical because that's who he's paid by? I would hope so. Um, if you go to your lawyer, wouldn't you hope that they're not de uh, paid by defense attorneys that want to sue you later? <laughs> I would hope so. So it seems to me, and, and, and it's, it's, most people don't even know this, if you go to an investment advisor and they're not legally required to act in your best interest and they, then they ask you to hand over your life savings, does that make you feel a little uneasy perhaps? It would me. The uh, Series 65 advisors, and, I, and I'm not trying to, trying to say that all Series 7 brokers are, uh, just because they're not fiduciary licensed, are bad people or won't give you good advice or don't care. I'm just talking about the legal standard. The legal standard for a Series 65 registered investment advisor is that they are required by law to act in the best interest of their clients. So the way this differ, differs, I got a couple of very easy examples for you. Uh, one is, let's say that, and I, I, I had one of my CPAs, he had a client do exactly this. She was a widow. She got a hold of her $2 million uh, 401k plan from her husband. She went down to the company with the football stadium named after him and gave the money to the guy and he had put them into some mutual funds. These are front-end load mutual funds, meaning that they pay a sales commission out of that money directly to that salesman. Day one. The commission on that was over $110,000 that was taken out of this widow's account and put into the pocket of the salesman. Now, if that same widow went to a registered investment advisor, they could buy the exact same mutual fund load waived, meaning that the 110000 plus would not have come out of her account and would have stayed in. Big difference. So when you're commission-based and you have a couple of options, and one is I can put you into something that pays me 110000 or I could give you some good advice over here that I don't get paid on, hmm, and I get fired if I don't put you into the loaded fund, I'll get fired. Uh, guess what my advice is going to be? So it's very important to get to a point where you feel like you can trust your advisor. And the first thing I would recommend is to make sure you're talking to a fiduciary licensed advisor. I want to give you another example. I've had this happen over and over. They come in. They got a lot of money. They say, Brian, I want you guys to invest our money. And I'll say, ooh, let's, let's go through your financial plan. Let's look at everything you have. And in the end, uh, I remember this particular example, they, they wanted to be conservative. And they didn't want to lose any. And so I said, okay, um, why, how would you feel about a 6% fixed guaranteed rate of return with no risk? How would you feel about that? And they're like, wow, I'd be all over that. So I said, all right. Pay off your mortgage because you're paying 
You owe 250 on your mortgage. You were going to invest 280 with me. Pay off your mortgage. I'm pretty simple. And they were like, well, yeah, of course. I six percent saved is six percent earned. Why wouldn't I do that? Yeah. They said, that's great advice. And they looked at me, oh, how do you get paid on that? I said, I don't. It's the right answer. I'm required by law to give the right answer. And he just looked at me puzzled and and I said, well, you can always refer me to somebody else, but you don't need me right now. You need to pay off your mortgage. So these are the kinds of things. I mean, sometimes people come to me and they say, I'm really, not, I'm really nervous about the markets. I don't like them. I'm great at building houses, but I have this money to invest, and I guess I better put it in the market. And I say, why? Why don't you go out and build houses? That's what you're good at. And they say, well, isn't that taking money out of your pocket? <laughs> doesn't matter. It's the right answer. So go to somebody where you feel like you're getting the right answer, that they're educating you, that they're uh, telling you how they're paid. Ask them. If they can't answer that or give you the runaround, I would give them the walk around, walk around their desk and walk out their office. Uh, understand what, the, what their relationship is to the investment products. Understand that they know they can answer your tax ramification questions, all these other things. But the simple thing to make sure you understand is, are they licensed as a fiduciary, and are they required to act in your best interest? Most investment professionals are not. <laughs>